Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So this particular video is going to be about operators in quantum mechanics and I have uh, started making few videos from the previous few weeks uh, on the topics which have been added recently in the GATE syllabus, okay, the revised syllabus of GATE if you know about that, right? So this is also one of the topic in which uh, uh, like which has been added recently in the GATE syllabus and it is about what operators are, what operators actually do and what are the types of operator, what is operator algebra and at the end of this video I will also take some questions as I usually used to do in my videos, right? So uh, this is not going to be a long video, in, uh, this is going to be a short and precise video and after watching this you will be get to know all the things about operators, okay? So I hope that after watching this video you will feel comfortable with operators in quantum mechanics and you will be able to solve questions related to that, right? Uh, so that's all, uh, just watch this video completely, the video is in pen and paper mode uh, and uh, show your love by giving like to this video, if you are new to this channel, subscribe to the channel and that's all for this particular part, uh, watch the video and understand the concept. So in this uh, lecture series of quantum chemistry, I have thought to include this video and I'll be talking about all the things related to these operators, okay? Few of the topics have been already taught and they, those videos are already there on the channel. So I'll be just giving you link of them at the respective time, all right? So let's talk about operators in the quantum chemistry. So uh, basically, you all have studied about the wave function up till yet. Yeah? Uh, we have seen that what a wave function is and we have also seen wave function in the, uh, in the Dirac notation, that is in the ket and the bra system, right? So we have seen the wave function, how we write them down and what are those things. So we know that a particular wave function, okay, a wave function carries uh, all the properties of a particular system, right? So if a wave function re is representing particle in a box, it carries all the properties of particle in a box inside it. Now you need to take out those properties, right? In order to take out properties from them or in order to uh, like measure out our properties from them, we need something and that's what is operator, okay? So operator you can understand in quantum chemistry like uh, these are like measuring units just like in the classical mechanics or in the normal world we need a meter scale to measure out the length, uh, we need a particular uh, uh, like a particular vessel to measure out volume. In the same way, we need operators in quantum chemistry to measure out uh, the properties right for example if I have to uh, measure the momentum of this particular wave function so I will be operating a uh, operator momentum operator on this wave function and this is going to give me the momentum of the system okay but there is a there is a condition over here okay in order to get the momentum of the prop of this particular wave function uh, you should be getting this as a Egan value equation okay that means this particular operator when you are operating on the wave function you should get the wave function back and along with that if you get any constant a so this constant a is going to tell you about the momentum of the system of wave function okay so that means a operator is itself an important thing when you operate operator on a wave function you get uh, if you get the wave function back this particular equation this particular equation is called as Egan value equation okay Egan value equation where a is called as your Egan value and psi is called as Egan function all right so uh, Egan value and Egan function I have already taught you in the in one of my videos so I'll be just giving you a link of that over here you can click on this and you can understand that if you want to understand it so a uh, operator operating on a particular wave function gives you the wave function back along with that whatever value you get that is going to be the measurable value or the or that particular measured value of uh, that wave function okay so if you are measuring momentum uh, if you are applying momentum operator you will get momentum of the wave function if i'll apply kinetic energy operator i'll get kinetic energy of the wave function if i'll be applying energy uh, or hamiltonian operator that is total energy operator on the wave function I'll be getting total energy uh, in if I get a Egan value equation, right? So Egan value equation is very important. Let's say you are not getting Egan value equation, okay? Without Egan value equation, what is the significance of this operator? So if you operate a particular operator, let's say A is a operator and you are operating this operator on a wave function, let's say I'm representing it in the form of a, a ket vector, okay? So if you are operating it on a ket vector, so you are going to get a new vector 
psi dash okay so a new ket vector is what you are going to expect over here if this does not follows a eigen value equation okay so the previous case this case was for the eigen value equation this is for non eigen value equation now operators can also be operated on a bra vector and remember that on a bra vector you operate your operators in this way that means operators are operated like this okay operators are written uh, right side of this uh, bra vector so you will be getting a, a new bra vector okay yeah sorry that's what you will be getting so this is what is about your operator and that's how they work now in quantum mechanics uh, there is a theorem that uh, with all okay that all so that means that all the physically observable quantities like position momentum kinetic energy potential energy angular momentum everything has a operator associated with them in the quantum physics or in the quantum chemistry and that's what you should need to know now we'll talk about that what these operators are and what are those values in quantum mechanics along with that we'll also talk about some properties of the operators uh like what is hermitian operator and what is linear operator we'll be talking about all of them so let's talk about first of all that what these operators are actually these all physically observable quantities what are those operators and what are their values so these are some of the very well known operators in your quantum mechanics which are very uh, frequently used in uh, your quantum mechanics and the solutions of your uh, whenever you will be solving quantum mechanical problem uh, so the first one is your uh, your momentum operator and it's px that means it's just denoting the x component of uh, mo uh, like momentum okay you can also have py and pz which will be representing the y component and the z component of your momentum and the overall p uh, like overall momentum operator will be sum of your px operator py operator and pz operator okay so this you should know one more thing is there that uh, we put a hat over these operators just to denote that yes they are operators okay just to just to make them a little uh, like just to give them a specific um, identity okay for that all, only we put this hat okay so the x component of the momentum has a particular value in quantum mechanics we put whenever we'll be having x component of momentum we'll be replacing that with this that is h cross i do by do x or you can also replace it with this that is minus i h cross do by do x okay so that's what it is now remember that a moment uh, any operator is actually incomplete without any wave function so that means uh, this momentum does not have any of its significance unless and until you put a wave function around it okay so if i am operating it on a five wave function so then this uh, is going to give me momentum of this five wave function okay so now i'll be having phi over here and here so now this is how my equation is going to change okay so make this thing very sure that a an any operator okay momentum or kinetic energy or any operator is incomplete without the wave function so you need a wave function on which this operator operates on the next is your uh, kinetic energy operator again this is the x component of kinetic energy operator so uh, this is given by this that is minus h cross square upon 2m and it's like do 2 uh, by do x square that is second order differential of this now again the same thing that uh, you have to apply it on a wave function so if i am applying it on psi so here this psi is going to come one more form of this is in the terms of your uh, like kinetic energy operator in terms of your momentum operator and you can write down like px square by 2m okay so that's how your kinetic energy operator can be written in terms of your uh, momentum operator next is your angular momentum operator angular momentum operator uh, has three components as your uh, momentum and kinetic energy operators were having so you, this is lz and it's given by minus i h cross x d by dy minus y d by dx okay so this is the value of this i'll be talking about the others also and i'll also give you a trick how to write them uh, like how to write down these values it's very important to know because once in csr net a question was asked for two marks uh, just to find out the value of ly okay so you should know about that the next is your uh, hamiltonian operator or also called as your total energy operator okay so this is also called as your uh, total energy operator okay so this is again in the x component only and it's 
actually the sum of your you can see that this is kinetic energy operator and this particular part is your uh, potential energy right so this is nothing but uh, so uh, this is nothing but the total energy operator is sum of kinetic energy and potential energy components and that's how you get the total energy operator so let's talk about few more things about the properties of the operator and how to uh, utilize these things okay all right let's try to understand about angular momentum operator so angular momentum operator as i told you for lz i have given you the value but it's important to understand that how to write down this okay so remember that the cycle goes in this order okay you have to go from x to y and from y to z so the cycle goes in this order okay this this you have to understand so if you are writing let's say you are writing about lx that means the x component of the angular momentum operator so minus ih cross will be there always outside the bracket inside the bracket you don't since you have you are writing the value of x you, so you don't have to put value of x from here okay what comes after x is y so you have to start from y so y do by do z minus z do by do y okay so that's how it will go similarly when you are writing for y so minus ih cross will be there okay ly will be like minus ih cross and now after y what is coming z is coming okay so you have to start from z so z do, do by do x minus x do by do z remember that if you are writing for y y will not come inside the bracket anywhere if you are writing for x x will never come inside the bracket anywhere okay in the same way if you want to write down for the value of lx sorry lz so how that will be written so lz will be like minus ih cross will be written outside the bracket inside the bracket after z your x is going to come so x do by do y minus y do by do x so this is what it is okay so it's as simple as that so this is your angular momentum operator and that's how you write them down now let's try to understand some of the properties of your operators let's look upon some of the properties of operators now so the first property is that if you have two operators a and b so a a dot b is not going to be equal to b dot a so remember that the order over here matters okay order matters over here so it's not commutative that's what it means okay so you cannot apply or uh, like like this okay so if you cannot do like this that you cannot apply two operators uh in this way that means uh, that means what that means you are operating b operator on this psi first and then operating this a operator and this is not going to equal to the same thing which you are going to do in this way that means operating a operator on the wave function and then operating the b operator so these two things are not going to be same okay so order matters a lot so it's not going to be commutative in any way the second property is called as your associative nature so two uh, basically three operators a b and c are always associative in nature so if you are doing like a operator operating and then b c uh, on a particular wave function so that can be equal to a b and c okay so that means operating c first then operating the product of a and b okay so like that so this is followed so associative nature is followed over here the next property is the property of power okay so property of property of power so if you have operator a of n order and if you have operator a again of m order so if you are operating both of them on a particular wave function so that will be same as operating operator a of order n plus m on the wave function psi okay so that is one more property of it the next one is called as linear operator property so a particular operator will be called as a linear operator if it follows these two conditions the first condition is that that if you are operating operator on sum of two op uh, wave functions like psi1 and psi2 i have taken them as a as ket vectors over here uh, you can also write them down in a simple way like this that a vector or uh, like operating on psi1 plus psi2 okay so this has to be equal to a operator operating on psi1 plus a operator operating on psi2 okay so that's what it is uh, in the same way or uh, it's written over here that uh, your a vector operating on the sum of your uh, two ket vector psi1 and psi2 is equals to uh, a operator operating like separately on both these ket vectors so that's what is the first property of your linear operator so operator will be said linear operator if it follows this condition the second condition is that that if you are operating a operator on product of the wave function and a, a some scalar value okay a is a is a constant over here okay 
a constant or you can say it's a scalar over here so if it is a scalar value so in that way uh, it should be equal to like you can take this scalar outside and then it should be equal to the operator operating on that particular cat vector okay so a operating on psi a psi it should be equal to a then a operating on psi so these are the two conditions which a operator has to follow in order to become a linear operator now apart from this one more thing is very important and that is your hermitian operator okay so hermitian operator i have already made a video on that so i guess you all know about it if you have not watched that video just watch on this uh, just click on this link over here and you will be redirected to that particular video so watch that video also on hermitian operator and that's very important let's talk about one more property of operator that is expectation value of an operator okay so expectation value or average value of an operator with respect to some wave function psi is given by this that is if a is the operator it's like psi a psi divided by uh, psi psi okay so this is the normalized uh, form of that wave function and in the above it will be like uh, like the cat and bra uh, like in the dirac notation it is written like that okay now remember that this particular expectation value will be applicable for all the a or all the operators uh, which are associated with the physically observable quantities for example uh, they might ask you to find out the expectation value of position of a particle so that will be given by this that is psi x psi sorry, psi and in the denominator you will be having psi and psi like that okay so that's how you have to use they can also ask the expectation value of uh, momentum operator or expectation value of your kinetic energy so that's where you will be using this particular property the last and the important point about the property of your operator is that uh, i guess in the last video where i have discussed about the dirac notation you all know uh, you have studied about inner product and outer product so outer product of two vector is also a linear operator for example if you are doing uh, outer product of psi and phi so this is actually a operator and this operator is linear in nature okay it's a linear operator so these are certain points about your operators and i guess you guys understood it well if you have any doubt you can ask that doubt in the comment sections below we'll take some questions now which have been asked in the previous years of gate and csir net based upon your operators and let's try to see that how to solve them out right so this was a question asked in gate 2016 and the question says that the linear momentum of a particle described by the wave function so this was the wave function given uh, is okay so in order to answer this question uh, as we know that uh, this is a kind of eigen value equation that's what they are asking so they want you to find out linear momentum so that means you have to apply linear momentum operator and since this is in the x direction so i'm just applying x like linear momentum along the x direction okay and i'm applying this on the wave function now my wave function over here is given that e to the power minus i k x so that's what i'm i'm going to substitute here okay so uh, let's put the value of this now so the momentum value or the value of your linear momentum uh, we have already seen that it was uh, minus i h cross and do by do x that was the value of my linear momentum operator right and uh, the value of psi is what we have to substitute so e to the power minus i k x that's what we are going to do so now nothing much we have to just differentiate this and that's what is going to give us the answer so when you differentiate anything like e to the power i'm just giving you a hint over here for those who are from non mathematic background so see this that if you have d by dx of e to the power a x this becomes this is actually equals to this particular thing is actually equal to a e to the power ax okay so whatever you have in e to the power with the coefficient of x that will come forward that's it okay that's it you have to do so here again we'll apply the same thing so e to the power minus i k x so this is the coefficient minus i and k so that will come forward so the value of this is going to be minus i and h cross was already there and the differentiation of this will be minus i k e to the power minus i k x all right so this is what you will be getting uh, after solving this you will multiply this so minus minus will become plus i and i will become i square right h cross you have k and you have 
e to the power minus i k x. So this is your wave function, right? You got your wave function back. So you applied operator on the wave function. You got your wave function back. That means this particular equation is a eigen value equation, right? Now once you understood this, that this is a eigen value equation. That means whatever constant or whatever eigen value you are getting here, this is nothing but the linear linear momentum of the system. Why? because i told you in the starting itself that if you apply a linear momentum operator the eigen value will be equal to the linear momentum so that means they were asking about the same thing the linear momentum of the particle so that means my linear momentum okay of the system will be equal to i square h cross k now i square is having a particular value that is minus 1 so the answer will be minus h cross and k look upon the options where you have that so minus h cross and k is there in option number d so option d is going to be your correct answer for this particular question so this is how you have to apply uh, whatever we have studied about the operators uh, to solve a question we'll take one more question which was asked earlier in gate exam and we'll see how to solve that out all right so we'll take the last question for this particular video this was asked in gate 2015 and the question says that when a operator minus h cross square d2 by dx square operates on the function e to the power i k minus i k x the result is okay so we are given with the operator so let's say my operator is a and that is minus h cross square d2 by dx square and my wave function psi is equals to e to the power minus i k x so i have to operate this operator on this wave function so i'll do it as we have studied so a operator on operating on this wave function can be written as this that is minus h cross square uh, d2 by dx square of e to the power minus i k x now try to understand this that this is a double order differentiation you have to differentiate two times so i can write down this thing like this it will be like minus h cross square d by dx is what i can write down and in the bracket i can write down d by dx so i have just separated out this second order differentiation or two times differentiation like this and this will be e to the power minus i k x now we have studied just now in the previous question that whatever e to the power we have as a coefficient that will come outside so here i'll be having minus h cross square d by dx and the value of this whole bunch of thing is going to be minus i k and e to the power minus i k x understood so what i have done i have just taken the coefficient uh, outside and i have just uh, like i have just written it in that way okay so that's pretty much sure i guess you guys have understood it so this is a constant term this will not get differentiated further it can be taken outside of the differential bracket so now my value will be this that i'll be getting minus h cross square was already there and i'll be having minus i and k and d by dx of again e to the power minus i k x all right so this is what i am going to do now so just let's try to do it so this minus and minus will become plus uh, this will give me i h cross square k that's what i will be getting minus minus will become plus again the differentiation of this will again give me the same value that is minus i k e to the power minus i k x all right now again this is a constant term i'll be multiplying it opening the bracket and that's how i'll get my value as the final pro, uh, answer so the final answer will be this that is i'll multiply this so this will be minus i square h cross square k square e to the power minus i k x all right so we have got this minus i square h cross square k square e to the power minus i k x and we know that this i square is equals to minus 1 so that minus 1 and this minus is going to become plus so what we are going to get is h cross square k square e to the power minus i k x and this is going to be the final answer now if you look upon the options so h cross square k square uh e to the power i k x that is in your option number 1 so option a is going to be the correct option for this particular question so this is how we approach questions uh, 
based upon operators i hope that whatever i have taught you in this particular video regarding operators and operator algebra is much clear to you i have i hope that this video was helpful for you in your preparation of your csr net and gate exam if you have any doubt you can ask that doubt in the comment section below and uh, that's all for this particular video guys thank you so much for watching and uh, see you guys in the next video till then have a great day bye bye